ACC women's basketball coming your way from Tallahassee, Florida tonight as the 11th ranked NC State Wolfpack make their way south to take on the high scoring Florida State Seminoles. Now, one of these teams was predicted to be about where they are in the standings right now. That would be the defending champion NC State Wolfpack in the top five. But how about Florida State pick ninth in the preseason, currently sitting in second. And with that, we welcome you in Jen Hildreth along with the Hall of Famer Debbie Antonelli. Debbie, NC State back at full strength and they may need every bit of it tonight going against a Florida State team that's been one of the best stories with one of the best players in college basketball so far. Well, there's no question about that. Florida State has been not just in the ACC, but across the national landscape. One of the biggest surprises because they have this freshman named Tanaya Latson, who leads the league in scoring almost 25 points a game, which puts her fifth in the nation in points per game. That is impressive for a 5'8 freshman who comes in with a college ready body, strong and athletic. Next level IQ for a freshman has three level scoring, can get to the rim, very good in the mid range, has three point ability as well, reads the two man game at a high level. She is electric in the open floor and she is a challenge to keep in front. And that challenge in part will go to Diamond Johnson, the point guard for NC State. Back and back and back again because they need her scoring, they need her ball handling. They need her on the top of the floor to manage the tempo for NC State on the road. Diamond, when she plays well, NC State plays well. So they're going to need her to score, take care of the basketball, and attack the Florida State pressure. Diamond Johnson was out for four games, returned a couple of games ago. This is her third game back for Westmore. Happy to have her, her second back in the starting lineup. He knows what an important piece she is, not just in scoring and three-point shooting, but just in getting this Wolfpack team to go. They also come in top four in the ACC in scoring, by the way. Jada Boyd, another one of those Wolfpack players that missed some time with injury. So Boyd and Johnson both back for NC State as they come down to Tallahassee. Seminoles in white on their home floor, NC State in black. This is a hard driving right handed team in Florida State that likes to score on the right side of the floor. They will mix up their defenses and try to keep NC State off balance. See that starting five for the Wolfpack. Johnson along with Madison Hayes, Jakia Brown-Turner, Boyd and Hobby and a three to get things started. For Florida State, Tania Lips, and then the story of the season, Sarah Bajetti coming off a great game, Massengill, Howard, and Timson. As Latson has her first points now. Keeping Latson out of the paint is a challenge. NC State needs to be on top of their personnel scout, knowing who they can help off of and where they can give help to Latson. Offensive rebound by Hobby. She puts it back. So I love that NC State comes out, runs America's play, reject the screen, drive baseline, rescreen, and Madison Hayes, who just hits a triple, takes another look. There she goes again. Two drives, two baskets, four points for Latson and Florida State. I mean, she's aggressive, Jen, right? She's taking the first three possessions, the first three shots, and I like it. I mean, I think that's the way it should be. She is that dynamic of a scorer. Johnson coming off the screen. This Florida State team will go if they get the opportunity. Timson in the paint adds to the scoring. Well, that's the number one thing, right, for NC State is transition defense. And that doesn't just start with sprinting back. That starts with your shot selection. You got to make sure you get good looks against Florida State so you can set your defense. Of course, it's better for NC State if they're making Florida State take it out of the net. Boyd loses it out of bounds, so Florida State will take over. Five 87.3 points per game, Debbie, for this Florida State team. You talked about how well they score top in the league. And there's another basket. Good start so far offensively as Massengill, the transfer from Kentucky has two. 
Well, so far, I haven't seen either team really get in a stance defensively, so if it's going to be all about offense, okay. That's fine with me. Kia Brown-Turner, senior, round and out. Latson looking at options. Gets it inside. That's been a dynamic duo, Latson and Timpson, for the Seminoles this season. Well, early on, Florida State looks dialed in. And they have been getting the shots that they want. This is a really tough contested three. Too early in the shot clock and no passes in the offense. Seminoles coming off their first ACC loss of the season against Boston College in overtime in their last game. And Brooke Wyckoff said this team bounces back. They've done it all season long. They're 15 and three overall. And she fully expected this team to come out locked in like we've seen them so far. First season is head coach for Brooke Wyckoff, but obviously a very familiar face to this program. Her 12th on staff. She was an interim head coach in 2021 20, season and then spent 10 years as an assistant with longtime head coach Sue Semrau, who she played for as an All-American there at Florida State. It is exciting, and I'm anxious to see how Florida State responds. Coming off a loss to Boston College, Sarah Bajetti at the line had a career high 26. We asked Brooke Wyckoff about that today on our Zoom call. She said that she's asking her team to be consistent, and she said they've been bringing that consistent level of energy to practice every day. Good start, 12-5 for the Seminoles, who've lost five in a row in the series against NC State. These two teams met up in the ACC Tournament quarterfinals last year, out to the Wolfpack, winning the tournament title. The Jetty got through everybody. Yeah, uh, very And Wes Moore effort. wants a timeout. Poor effort by NC State to start the game, and Florida State is getting to do whatever they want to do. Florida State off to a blistering start. They've made six of their seven field goals. Debbie have scored 12 straight. I mean, look at the explosion up the floor, and NC State has not stopped their transition game yet. What you need to do is make Florida State execute, but if you're going to just let them go where they want and take you to the basket in transition, you've got five players back, but nobody's stopping the ball. Good timeout by Wes Moore to get his team refocused here on the road. Well, he told us when we talked to him yesterday that he often is the emotional leader for this team. He's looking for a little more of that response from some of his players. He made some substitutions in that timeout. River Baldwin, former Florida State Seminole, number one is on the floor, as is Sanaya Rivers. Well, I like the substitutions right now. You get Sanaya Rivers back on the floor. She's played well. She's handled the point guard responsibility for Westmore while Diamond Johnson was injured. And of course, River Baldwin making her return to Florida State after playing three years in Tallahassee. Yeah, she was asked about that before this game and uh, was admitting it might be a bit strange to this place that she had been coming to since she was in seventh grade to watch basketball games. Rivers from Andalusia, Alabama had gone to watch Florida State play and obviously spent three years there before transferring as a graduate this year to NC State. Aaron Howard committing the foul that put Baldwin on the line. Timpson just barely keeping the ball as there are a lot of arms of Wolfpack players and fingertips in there to disrupt. Isaiah James also on the floor for NC State and she scores. Well, what a great job by Sanaya Rivers rebounding and busting up the floor and James really changing tempo right there by changing her dribble cadence to get into the rhythm of her shot. Steps taken on that play. 
That was Mariana Valenzuela with the travel. Well, this is what NC State needed, a burst of energy, and that's what Rivers and James have given them off the bench. Look at this right here. Just keep your dribble alive and improve your angle to the basket. Nice job by the sophomore, James. And actually, I mentioned a couple of players, River Baldwin, Tania Rivers, but there were more changes than that. Mimi Collins also out on the floor. So Westmore looking for some personnel that's going to give him the effort he wants to see with his team down on the road right now. But here's the thing, Jen. If you do what NC State is doing, one pass and a shot or a quick trigger on the other end, you're fueling right into Florida State's tempo. That is a beautiful three by Sarah Bajetti coming off that career high 26. Yeah, I think she's still feeling it after that 26 point performance in the loss at Boston College where she was shooting the ball well from three. I mean, hands down. And you have to know the scout. It's one of the first things I said early on. You better know the personnel for Florida State. Mimi Collins hits the two, makes it a seven point Florida State lead. So the only starter still out on the floor for the Wolfpack is Madison Hayes. Timpson the offensive rebound and then River Baldwin takes it away. NC State coming off a game of 12 blocks against Virginia. The River Baldwin a big part of protecting the rim inside. Yeah, there's 12 blocks the most since 2011 for the Wolfpack and on the offensive end in that win against Virginia, they also shot 57% season high in field goal percentage. Off the inbounds play. Doesn't quite fall for James. Latson. Let him get to that right hand, James. You cannot let Florida State go right. They all drive hard to their right, and they all are tough off the bounce. And they've proven tough to stop so far. 19-10, Florida State lead. Latson has six. Vegetti with seven. Baldwin in the paint and out. Vegetti, she's not afraid to go left, and she gets fouled on her way to the basket. Well, one of the things Brooke Wyckoff told us this morning is your first job, if you get a rebound, is to get a layup. So if you don't see two shoulders, two hips, you drive it till you get to the rim. Your second is to drive and kick. Those are the responsibilities in transition. And right now, Florida State really hasn't had to run much offense. Baldwin on the foul, and Bajetti misses the first. And a lot of those offensive principles you're talking about, Debbie, have come along with Bill Farrar, who joined the Red Pop staff this year as an associate head coach. And she's talked about that pace and space offense, right, which has certainly paid dividends so far. Well, I think Brooke is smart, and I think she's hardworking, and I think she understands what it takes to win in this league. She's been a part of the league since 97. So she's seen a transition inside the league to why the product is so good right now. Collins likes that baseline jumper. She's got a couple of them for NC State. That is a blocking foul of this Baldwin, and looks like it is. It's gonna be her second personal. I want you to watch as this, game, oh, as this game goes on, how many shots Florida State will take on the right side of the floor versus what they do on the left side. So far, everything is very right hand dominant and very much to the right side. Oh, Valencia Myers rolling to her right. Myers and Gordon, Omaria Gordon in off the bench for Florida State at the moment. Mariana Valenzuela out there as well. And the player just committed the foul, Taylor O'Brien, the transfer from Bucknell, who was out 10 games earlier in the season, commits the foul. Well, River Baldwin off the bench has had an impact early, right? She's going to the free throw line for another trip. 
This is her second. So she's already drawn a couple of fouls on the Florida State front line. Sometimes that extra emotion, Debbie, of facing your former team can be a good thing, can add some fuel. I think Dontavia Wagner was thinking that at NC State for Boston <laughs> College last week, for sure. I'd say so. She led the Boston College Eagles in that upset, was named ACC Player of the Week for her efforts. Nice drive there from Valenzuela. Okay, it's going to sound like a broken record, but I'm telling you, after watching film and studying Florida State, everything is on the right side of the floor. So what you have to do is either help more from the left side and pinch, or not let them get to the right side at all by guarding, you know, keeping the ball from getting over there. Don't let them reverse it. Good offensive possession there for NC State. Now we'll see how they do on defense. Now it's an open look for Gordon. with the Wolf Pack as it was tapped out of bounds. Sanaya Rivers, who played so well when she was having to play more minutes with Diamond Johnson out, still trying to have a positive impact because her potential is so great. Transfer from South Carolina. Valenzuela, swing move, spin move in the paint. She has six now. Multiple weapons, and Florida State, who averages 87 points a game, is on pace to do that here in this first quarter. They're third in the nation in points per game. And NC State has taken eight three-point attempts of their 16 field goals, Jen. So half their shots have come outside the arc while Florida State is looking to attack off the bounce. Come on, baby. Rivers pulls up, it's good. Yeah, that is a very high percentage, Debbie, for an NC State team that truly doesn't shoot the three all that often. Chance on the break for the Wolfpack now. Hayes doesn't finish. There is a foul against the Seminoles. Gordon committing the foul. And then just losing her balance a little bit was James got tripped up. I think the ball is getting stuck at NC State and they need to move it and Westmore was concerned about this with his team about them staying connected and moving the ball. You see Diamond Johnson sitting there on the bench Debbie she's played three minutes in this game. That's it. Well Diamond didn't start off the game defending and took a couple of tough shots. And I think that's part of the reason why she might be sitting. A high scoring quarter so far for the ACC's highest scoring team, Florida State, looking to add maybe a couple more before this first quarter's over. Nope, that is an offensive foul called against Valencia Myers. Well, after having to defend and guard each other for three years in Tallahassee, I think River Baldwin and Valencia Myers know each other's game very well. Rivers will launch from half court. Not a good look at it, but NC State with 19, the 11th ranked team in the country trailing Florida State as Brooke Wyckoff gets a hug from her daughter who's got to love what she's seeing so far. As we get set for the start of the second quarter in Tallahassee, Florida State leading NC State 28-19. You wonder, let's see, Debbie Antonelli, which players go back out on the floor for NC State because Westmore essentially benched four of his starting five in that first quarter. I mean, can you blame them? 
Honestly, I mean, did they show up with effort? Did they make good decisions? Did they stop the ball in transition? The answer would be no to all three of those questions. So let's see, NC State's coming out of zone here, changing it up. It's not, a, West likes to play some zone, but we usually don't see it this early in the game. I like the change. They're having trouble keeping them out of the paint. Miss from Brown and Turnage on her first attempt off the bench for Florida State. So Diamond Johnson, Jada Boyd, Camille Hobby, Chiquita Brown Turner all back out there with Sanaya Rivers. Hobby the rebound. Bajetti. Valenzuela also getting the start in the second quarter for Florida State. Diamond, back to Rivers. So Sanaya Rivers is a much better three-point shooter now than she's been. She's made eight coming into the game, but she's 0 for 3 early. She's a much better driver, putting pressure on Florida State's defense. She has worked hard to improve her three-point shooting, but she also is capable of putting it on the bounce. Brown Turner. Latson. A little lean in the corner from Bajetti. Can't help it go in. So three defensive possessions for the Wolfpack in zone, and Florida State is 0 for 3. Good coaching change and adjustment by Wes Moore. Yeah, for a Florida State team that was shooting 71% in the first quarter. Now Diamond Johnson, best three-point shooter on this Wolfpack team, has her first points. But Jenny with the drive, it's blocked by Hobby. She tried to knock it off of Bajetti, but it winds up going out of bounds off Hobby. You go under, Diamond is going to pull the trigger. She takes that as a personal insult. 47% <laughs> three-point shooter, I should think so. Brown Turner. NC State getting a couple of sides. Good seal. That pass has to be to the lead hand, almost to the corner of the backboard. There was a great seal on the weak side by Camille Javi. The lead to six now for Florida State after they led by nine at the end of the first quarter. Seminoles have yet to score in quarter number two. It looked like they were never going to stop scoring in the first quarter. But Jetty may be a little too fancy on the break. Well, what great anticipation by Latson. Did you see the calculated risk to anticipate that inbounds pass and get the steal? That was a big time play by the freshman. And they were playing zone on the baseline out of bounds. She is fun to watch. She's explosive and she's a hard worker and a two way player. Brown Turner with the drive. Turnage getting some minutes here. Played some high school basketball with Watson in Atlanta. Those shots all of a sudden not looking so open, so easy for Florida State. That thing rolled around every part of the rim before finally rimming out for Johnson. The NC State zone has been effective. Florida State doesn't have a field goal here in the second quarter. Over for six start, Latson will try to change that, it does. She has such great feel for the game. Such good intuition. And a skill set to go with it. Both teams, one for seven in the second quarter. The difference for NC State though is that defensive effort, which 
was sorely lacking in the first quarter when they gave up 28 points. The most they conceded in the first quarter of the season. Time for the most. And speaking of defense. Are you kidding me? That kid's motor is really fun to watch. Look at this effort right here. You cut her off. She's got athleticism. She's got a knack for scoring. She is seeking shots. And then how about this? Back-to-back -back defensive plays. The steal on the out-of-bounds play, and then the block. And Diamond Johnson had to shoot it with the shot clock running down. Made a good effort out of it, but couldn't get it to fall. Now can Florida State figure out this zone? That's a good spot, and Massengill makes it. I mean, that's where you want to go. And Massengill does a great job of reading the space. That logo is wide open. 10-point Florida State lead. No, Seminoles have lost the last five in the series. The last time they won was here on their home floor. They upset a top 10 NC State team in that game back in 2019. Watson had it taken away. Rivers says, that's for the block you did a few minutes ago. And then she gets the points in transition to boot. Yeah, how about the quick hands? And look at the wingspan on Sanaya Rivers. Plays much bigger than her 6-1 frame. That pass a little over ambitious, perhaps, from Aaron Howard. Aaron Howard is their best three-point shooter, Jen. So with the zone by NC State, Florida State needs to find a way to get her in the gap, get her in the slot, drive and kick, set her up for a three. Johnson uh, nearly juked herself out with that move, but she recovered. Another late shot clock. Hayes, though, finishes just like she planned it that way. Eight points in the game for Madison Hayes. She's been playing well for NC State. She has been consistently good with the injuries and the up and down of the lineups. She's been solid. Wolfpack trying to close the gap, and this zone has given Florida State trouble. We've seen some good defensive plays by the Wolfpack this quarter. Sanaya Rivers, the quick hands. An easy one for the Wolfpack. State going to the zone, Debbie, and it's been effective here in the second quarter. Well, I think you have to take the pain away for Florida State, and Westmore going to the zone to start the second quarter, getting his starters back on the floor. I thought they did a much better job of collapsing on the ball and rebounding out of the zone to get up the floor. I mean, if tonight Latson can get to where she wants to go, it's going to be a long night for NC State. So far, Florida State has taken two shots on the left side of the floor. And they came against the zone. As you've talked about, this is a team that has been very effective going right. Out of the timeout, trying to penetrate that zone. O'Brien's shot is short. Looking for her first points, won't get him there. Florida State has done a really good job cleaning up the glass as well. NC State has not really scored on their offensive rebounds. Seven on the shot clock, Gordon. Big rebound by Timpson and then River Baldwin leading the defensive charge, just held her ground. Not many times in the ACC is Diamond going to go eye to eye with somebody the same size, and that's what she gets in Gordon. <laughs> Gordon. 
six to shoot. The defense has made it tough. Look at the push. Well, Florida State wants that if they can get it. And once again, Timpson tries to go up through about three NC State defenders. Can't finish. On most nights, Timpson is going to beat the five player down the floor. She's athletic, she's long. She's got seven double doubles on the season. She's a rebounder and she sprints the lane. She knows she can beat River Baldwin down the floor. Rivers looking for Baldwin, yes. See, and that's a, a great job by Diamond because she made the extra pass to get it on the right angle to enter it into the post. And after scoring 28 points in the first quarter, Florida State has just four here in the second. Massingo pulls up from the free throw line. A little more of that, says Florida remember State. What, remember what Brooke Wyckoff told us today, you know, Massingo, she expects her to look for more shots. I think she's looking for more offense tonight. She's three for four from the floor. Johnson drives to the basket and will go to the free throw line. Man, Diamond's got some flash and some flair. And there's nothing wrong with it. Look at this move right here. Just crafty underneath the D, draws the foul, keeps her eyes on the rim. She's taking on a 6-1 long athletic play right there. And Timpson whistled for the foul on the play. Her first six points in the game for Johnson. And just like that, it is a one possession game again. I haven't seen that in a while as Florida State really flexed its muscle. And then Latson says, showtime. I mean, watch her go right down the lane line. If you watch her game, this is where she gets in the paint and does some damage. River Baldwin's in the restricted area. Latson is known to charge, and most teams rotate over to, to draw that charge on her. She did have three charges against Boston College. But River Baldwin late getting there. Latson so quick. And that would be her 37th consecutive made free throw. Kind of had the crowd on edge for a bit as it rolled around. And it was a third foul, Debbie, on Baldwin. So that's going to be something to watch for as this one goes on. Rivers just stepped out of bounds, loses it, turns it over to Florida State. Now, we're not there because we're in our home studios to count the panels between the end line, the sideline, and the three-point line. There's usually 17 there, so there's not a lot of space. 17 panels. Rivers once again with her hand in the passing lane, takes it away, dishes to Johnson. Pretty play in transition. NC State, since Wes Moore benched his starters early in the first quarter, has played much better as a team. Gotta watch out for Valenzuela, though. The sophomore, 6-2 out of Mexico, can knock down the three. She's shooting at almost 58% for the season from three. And Diamond Johnson's feeling it. I think you're right, Debbie. That message got sent as she played three minutes in the first quarter. Now she's come on in the second quarter has eight points and has really been pushing the tempo for her team. And it wasn't just her, it was Jakia Brown-Turner, Jada Boyd, and Camille Hobby that all took a seat early in the first quarter. And Boyd is still yet to score, just two points for Hobby. Zone by Florida State. I thought going to the zone against Boston College helped Florida State in that game on the road. Three to shoot, Boyd, still scoreless. And this will give Florida State an opportunity to take the last shot of the half. See, those are the plays that catch up with you because it just wasn't a smart play. 
And it's not just because Jada Boyd ends up with the ball in her hands. The whole thing wasn't smart. The whole play. Have to imagine Lapson gets it back again here at some point in this possession. Leading scorer in the ACC, but time running out. The Jimmy says, force a on three, and she hits it. Well, that's a good way to end the first half of your Florida State. The logo. Coming off a career high, 26, Sarah Bajetti. Check this out. She knocks it down. Florida State up 10 as we send you to the studio. Guys, thanks so much. Welcome into this ACC Network Halftime Report alongside our newest Ladies Night member, former Duke All-American Lexi Brown and former Clemson sharpshooter Kelly Graham. Like I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you and great to see what Sarah Bajetti was able to do there at the end, Lexi. We've talked a little bit about her. They closed things out on a 6-0 run, but that's really going to give them some life going into the half. Yeah, absolutely. I think that she's their energizer bunny. That's what I called her when they... Um Played Boston College uh, over the weekend. She was the one of the uh, bright spots in that game. You know, I really love her energy, love the way she plays, and she's shooting the ball really well right now, even though her percentages say she's not a three-point <laughs> shooter. She showed up tonight, and she's knocking it down. Yeah, those percentages, I think, are slowly going up after the BC game, and then tonight, that three at the end, the way she released it, Lexi, oh, it just kind of felt like... That was With going in. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Florida State got off to a crazy start, Kels. They shot 70% from the floor in the first quarter. NC State was able to bounce back, though, and that was a good sign because NC State looked a little lifeless in the first quarter. You see them, Florida State, knocking down some shots. You mentioned those 70% shooting. <laughs> Finished the half shooting 53% from the first half because NC State was able to lock them down a little bit in that second quarter. They switched to zone, and why was that causing so many issues for Florida State? I think that uh, they were getting eaten up alive at the at the rim, you know, going right, right, straight line drive, straight line drive. Uh, I think that was a great adjustment by NC State to go into that zone, and, they, you know, they, they, they kind of changed the pace of the game and were able to come closer a little bit. Mm -hmm. And let's be clear, Florida State's a really good team. Yes. I like this team a lot. I think they're a top 25 team. If they had beaten Boston College, they would be ranked right now. But one way to play them is in zone because they're so good, as Lexi said, at getting to the rim. You want to make them more of an outside shooting team. But Jetty says, okay, I'll take that. But still, I think you'd rather them shooting threes than getting to the rim so easily. Bajetti already has 11 and 0, by the way, the phenomenal freshman who we haven't even gotten to talk about yet, Tania Latson, right back on track. She's got 11 points in the first half as well. It is a 10 point lead for Florida State at the break. Back out to the second half of this game in just a second. How about Sarah Bajetti pulls up from the logo, knocks it down. She's already got 11 points in the first half. Florida State with a 10 point lead at the break. Look, that Florida State mascot looks mad, but his team is in the lead. Florida State leading 11th ranked NC State by 10 at the half. The two players we talked about, Jen Hildreth, Debbie Antonelli, those are not the two players. The two players are Diamond Johnson, Tania Lassen. Oh. They had an impact. Hey, we're <laughs> players, all right. We're ballers over here. Hey, Diamond, you go under, she's going to get a bucket. Reject the screen. If you don't bring help, that's a straight line drive bucket. And on the other side, Tania Latson is everything we thought she would be. Hard driving, smart decisions. Can't keep her in front. And when she's in transition, she's hard to stop. The freshman who is fifth in the nation in scoring has 11 points at the break. Tied for the lead with Florida State, but I know you are excited about this. Our crew in Tallahassee has been working hard to put this together, Debbie. So why don't you talk about the shot chart for the Seminoles in this one. Well, here's the thing in watching film. I thought Florida State was very right handed. They're hard driving. They drive with their right hand. Look at the balance of their shots. So if you're trying to take something away from them, you do what Wes Moore does. You go to zone in the second quarter and in the first quarter, they didn't take any shots on the left side. In the second quarter, because they moved the ball against zone, they did get some shots on the left side. But you can see how efficient they are on the right side of the floor. So you have to try to game plan to keep them from getting to their right hand. And it is hard because they are very good off the bounce. 
Imagine that was some of the discussion for Westmore. And now we do have a bit of a delay. Got to get that basket in tip top shape. So while they work on that, should be ready in just a couple of minutes. So we'll take a quick break. Be right back with the start of the third quarter from Tallahassee. Looks like our friend Ethan, director of operations at the Tucker Center, has gotten that basket ready to go. We need it for the second half of this one with these two high scoring teams. Little under the average maybe for NC State in that first half, but they slowed Florida State down at least a little bit, Debbie, in the second quarter, though the Seminoles still with a 10 point lead. Well, I thought the switch to the zone had an impact on the pace. And because NC State was not doing a good job getting matched up in transition, the zone definitely worked. Now, Florida State's got to stay aggressive. You know, their strength is off the bounce, driving hard, moving the ball, getting people off balance, being late on a closeout, being a half a pass late on a closeout. If they can do that here in the second half, they have a chance to win. They had some adjustments in that second quarter as well. It took them a little time with that zone when NC State showed it. Florida State started the second quarter two for 13 from the floor, but they finished making their last four, went on a 6-0 run over the last minute, and now start this third quarter with a 10-point lead over number 11, NC State. Wolfpack in black with the ball. Jada Boyd, no points in the first half. Has it blocked, goes down awkwardly. Seminoles on the break, but Jetty has time to line it up. NC State ball. And that is not a good sight as Jada Boyd was hurt, came back just after Christmas, was out four games with an ankle injury, though in December. You see the staff addressing her lower right leg. Jada Boyd, such a key player, senior for the NC State team. Obviously, they've had to figure out how to play without her already this season. They don't want to go there again. She averages 10.8 points per game, is one of the best free throw shooters. In fact, the best free throw shooter in the conference, 94%. Hits just under 50% of her field goals, and now Wes Moore says not again. Well, they only have 10 players to start the season, so any injury would definitely have impact on their rotations, as we've already seen earlier in the season. Mimi Collins checking into the game as Boyd has to come out. Here's Collins with the basketball. Diamond Johnson left open. Latson. Swings it over to Massengill. Can see State. Starting five on the floor. Then Bajetti had that had three trouble. from the logo. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. They've had trouble guarding Florida State in a man to man. It's been challenging for them. 13 in the game for Bajetti. Brown Turner still doesn't have any points. She averages nine and a half for NC State. Tipson gets an open look inside. Let's see how long Wes Moore stays in this man-to-man -man before he has to go back to the zone. Right now, I think it's about pride for NC State. I mean, are you willing to get a stop? Are you willing to get in a stance? Are you going to move the ball for the extra shot, the extra pass? The Jetty, the only Seminole up the floor. Well, that's a pretty good outcome. The foul, the basket, and a free throw coming. What a great job by Brooke Wyckoff's club coming off the timeout to reassert themselves in the transition game. They have done a nice job getting up the floor. They share the ball. They're getting it to the right side, and they are running the floor hard. Bajetti does a good job of drawing this foul right here. First personal foul on Diamond Johnson. And Bajetti 
has all five points in the quarter so far for the Seminoles. Well, Timpson had two, excuse me. Timpson did have that look inside. Hayes. Offensive rebound from Collins. Presents another opportunity, but it's not finished. Blatson. Goes right in. Johnson gets around Bajetti. Camille Hobby gets it back to the point guard. Collins from the corner. Way off. Blatson. Beats a ball. This freshman is something special for Florida State. And the Seminoles showing off a bit at home against NC State. Good thing they got that basket fix because it has been all Florida State. An 11 0 run to start the third quarter. Five for their last five. And most of them are layups. If you don't stop the ball, it is going to be a layup drill for Florida State. And Watson, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't see two hips and two shoulders, she is taking it to the rack. And she's explosive and she is determined, much like the rest of her team tonight. Yeah, I had a chance to go over and see Latson at a shootaround actually in Chapel Hill, Debbie, when you and I were doing the game in Raleigh with Duke and NC State. Just because I wanted to see her in person. And watching her now, the first game that I've had a chance to call from her, it really does, does seem to come to her so smoothly. And Johnson's certainly smooth on the triple. Much needed points for NC State. Well, NC State comes off the timeout and they're in zone. But Jenny was following her shot. She didn't need to. Uh, let me take that back. I think half the team was in zone and the other half was in man and there was a miscommunication and Bajetti is wide open. 19 points now for Bajetti, coming off a career high 26. Collins, NC State playing without Jada Boyd at the moment who went down in the opening seconds of this third quarter awkwardly had to be helped off the floor. Look inside, Timpson. If NC State's not careful, this 23 could go to 33 very quickly. Brown Turner. Hobby picks it up and in. Good hustle by Hobby to get the loose change off the side of the backboard. Latson. Yep, she can do that too. Uh, display by Florida State. Second largest deficit of the season for NC State. It's almost unfathomable, this team that had so much promise. They're the defending regular season and tournament champs in the ACC. Went to the Elite Eight last year. Did have I'm feeling it for you, Wes. Seven a display. The Florida State Seminoles wide open in transition. They are dialing it up in Tallahassee. Florida State beating NC State 65-38, the Wolfpack's largest deficit of the season 
in this game. And Florida State certainly one of the surprises. If you look at preseason picks for some of these teams and where they are now, I mean, how about the Duke Blue Devils pick seven? They're at the top of the ACC. Syracuse has been impressive, couple of wins in a row. And of course, Boston College, what a big week they had beating both of these teams that are facing off here tonight, beating NC State when they were in the top 10 and then handing the Seminoles their first ACC loss. Out of the timeout, nice. Wolfpack at a three from Jessica Timmons. Yes, very good execution. That's the America's play. Reject the screen, drive baseline, rescreen, fill behind the screen, shoot the three. Everybody runs it, and they executed it perfectly. Valencia Myers knew exactly where she wanted to go there with Valenzuela in the paint, but it was kicked out, so it'll stay with Florida State under the basket. So if you're NC State right now, you are trying to cut this deficit in half. You want to take it from 24 to 12, if you can, by the start of the fourth quarter. And you have time to do that, but it starts on the defensive end. That's going to be a charge against Bajetti. And if you're West Moore's team, honestly, Jen, you are not watching the scoreboard. You are trying to play every possession. Stops and scores. That's what you're thinking. Tania Rivers gets an open look mm -hmm. at the basket. So you you got one stop and you got one score. Can you do that multiple times? Mario Gordon with it now for Florida State. 15 to shoot. Virginia has Myers. She's fouled. This is a great drop off in the paint, and Valencia Myers does an excellent job sliding into Vigetti's vision. River Baldwin steps up to take the charge. Sanaya Rivers late rotating from the top down to help. Great delivery. And Valencia Myers at the free throw line. It's come off the bench in every game this season from Florida State. Shrad student, and yes, she is that rare bird that has been at the same program for all of those five years. Been in Florida State since the beginning. And has been a starter for most of her career, Debbie. And so playing a different role this season with the Seminole team that she's got a lot of what they're doing so far in the ACC, especially. Basket does go. Isaiah James has four now. Latson works off the screen, gets in the lane, makes it look just so easy. I had a chance to have Tania Latson on my podcast earlier this week, and I asked her, what has been the toughest adjustment, the speed or the physicality? Mm, she was very humble about it because she's a humble kid, but really, neither has bothered her. <laughs> she has been fantastic from the beginning. She is nine for 10 from the floor, 21 points, and it, you see why this is a player that averages almost 25 points per game, tops in the ACC, fifth in the country. Good put back by Collins. Once again, some bench personnel helping NC State try to right the ship a little bit. They've got a ways to go. Finally, Florida State missed. They've made 10 of their last 11. <laughs> what a you great call by Florida State. Wyckoff's team. Uh, sorry, Debbie, you put that more on Florida State execution or lack of defensive execution for NC State? Well, you got to make the shots, that's one thing, but they had a lot of open looks because they pushed the ball in transition to get those looks, and NC State didn't match up very well. Latson. Oh, I mean, definition. 
of ticket selling player. Throw the hashtag out there right now because she is unbelievable. If you, live, <laughs> if you live in Tallahassee and you're not coming to games and watch this young woman play, what are you doing? Watch her on no, TV. Watch when they go on the road. It's special. Look, when Florida State goes on the road, buy your ticket to go see this kid play. Fearless. Seminoles will be at home for their next game. Louisville coming in here as Latson just continues what she does. Scoring the basketball, leading Florida State. 26 points, 11 of 12 from the floor. She's a show. Turn on the lights because it is showtime when Latson has the ball. I'm trying to think how many guards in the ACC are better than her. She is really good. She can score, she passes, she defends, she's a two-way player. Five times she's been over the 30-point mark this season. she got 26 right now with a minute 18 to play in the third quarter. Now, I can go all the way back to Jackie Stiles and watching Kelsey Plum play and watching Kelsey Mitchell at Ohio State. There's so many great guards in the history of our game that have played, and she is right on par with Caitlin Clark and her freshman scoring and those other players that I mentioned. But when you put it in context in the ACC, Elena Beard comes to mind. Ivory Latta comes to mind as freshmen that had impact, but not the kind of scoring ability that Latson has. You wonder just how far this freshman can take this Florida State team. They, I would think, had a chance to get into the top 25 before that loss at Boston College. Wolfpack knocked down a three. Timmons I mean, has a couple of those in this quarter. Why did Brooke even take her out? She's not tired. Let her keep playing. <laughs> Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Wolfpack trying to take a little momentum as Rivers beats everybody down the floor. And Debbie, I want you to get ready. We're gonna have a discussion in the fourth quarter, okay? And I want you to come at me and I know you vote top 25 every week. I'm curious about this Florida State team getting the top 25 and how far they could go. We're gonna talk about that fourth quarter. Don't tell me now, we'll do it when we come back. Well, a little bit of confusion on the floor. I believe that's the end of the third quarter. And Florida State just doing it all. 31 points in the third quarter. They lead NC State by 20. One quarter left to play. What more can they do? Back at Tallahassee, fourth quarter about to get going. The Florida State Seminoles currently not in the top 25. Maybe, Debbie, we see that change as we take a look at the teams from the ACC who are ranked at the moment. Well, those are all really good teams. Uh, and Virginia Tech is taking on Louisville at home tonight. So that's a game to keep your eye on because Louisville is in the top part of the standings as well. So sometimes it's not just a matter of where the teams are, but what other teams do around them in the poll as well. And there's a lot of factors to take into place. And, and for me, I've been an AP poll voter for 12 years. So I look at obviously results. I look at injuries. I look at the net. I look at who you play, when you play, where you play them. Uh, I look at the rest of the national landscape. There's a lot of other teams that can play well inside conference play as River Baldwin draws another charge. But when you look at Florida State right now coming into the game, their net ranking is number 12, uh, excuse me, number 16, which is outstanding. And if they knock off NC State and hang on here to win, Depends on what else happens tonight because there's a lot of big games. Um, and certainly I'm keeping an eye on Louisville as well because they're 4-1 in the league as well. And if they win on the road at Virginia Tech, 
Do you balance a Virginia Tech win on the road more than a Florida State win at home? How much does the BC well, loss factor in? You know, there's a lot of things that you have to take into account. Well, Debbie, it should so, help that Florida State Louisville will go head to head. That's the next game for the Seminoles. So that, maybe that would help in, in, <laughs> in that instance for those two teams. Under five to shoot for NC State. Rivers, no. Well, and just to take it to another step, Jen, I mean, like for me, I'm looking at what is Texas doing? They just had a win over Kansas. You know, are they going to get back in the poll? What about Seton Hall? They got UConn coming up. You know, Middle Tennessee State has been on a run. How about uh, keeping an eye on other teams? There's a lot of teams. Old Miss in the SEC, I'm keeping an eye on. So there's a lot of teams I'm looking at. Not just the ACC. Nothing exists in a bubble. They all impact one another. Appreciate always hearing your perspective on that, Debbie. Vigetti. She really has gone to work this entire game. I mean, Vigetti and Latson themselves outscored NC State in the third quarter. And she's well, not about I to always, let up. I always believe you cannot have enough guards and Florida State has multiple backcourt players that defend push and transition and can put the ball in the bucket for Brooke Wyckoff the jetty has really been the second piece along with Latson consistently in this game, but it's been good balance. Timpson's had a few, Valenzuela off the bench for Florida State. Massacre even picked her moments. Pass first point guard from Kentucky to the SEC in assist last year has six in the game and gets it inside where Timpson is fouled. That's on Baldwin, her fourth. And Debbie, while I know you are obviously watching this as a, a commentator, I imagine the part of you that wants more an NC State jersey, this has got to be a little bit tough for NC State fans to see. I mean, where does this Wolfpack team go from here? And again, Jada Boyd went out early in this third quarter. We've not had an update yet on her status, but they just have really struggled to keep up with Florida State most of the night. Well, first of all, Jen, for 35 years, I've been sitting in this chair calling games, so I have removed the emotion of being an NC State player. Everyone knows that I'm going to be fair and balanced, and sometimes I'm actually harder on NC State, I think, if anything, because you know what you start looking at is what kind of effort are they playing with? Did they follow the scout? Are they sharing the ball? Are they working hard? I think those are the things that Wes Moore wants to know. Where is the leadership? You know, where's the passion? If you're a head coach and you're bringing more energy and passion to it than your players, then there's got to be an adjustment there because Wes has been doing this for 34 years at a very high level and very successfully. They've won the last three ACC tournament championships. I mean, this is a championship program and Florida State is really good. It's who you play, when you play, where you play. It has a lot to do with it. James with the three there, and once again, this is a largely bench-made team on the floor for NC State at the moment. Hay is the only starter still on the floor. I told you Boyd went out with an injury, looked like, at the start of the third quarter. Had to be helped off the floor, but then you see Diamond Johnson sitting on the bench. Shakia Brown-Turner has no points in the game. So NC State having to dig deep here and in a pretty deep hole on the road in Tallahassee. Back in Tallahassee, this is the first of a doubleheader of women's hoops and ACCN tonight. Miami Georgia Tech coming up next. And then, of course, our, our ladies' night crew, the Nothing But Net crew, has you covered in studio. We wondered, though, why our Hall of Famer Muffet McGraw wasn't in studio. Debbie, you, you did a little research on that. 
Yeah, I text Muffet. I said, where are you? How come you're not in the studio? And she said, oh, I'm in San Antonio winning an award. And she happens to be winning the NCAA <laughs> President's Pat Summit Award, which recognizes an individual who has demonstrated de devotion to the development of college athletics and has had a positive impact on the lives of the people that they are engaged with. And Muffet, congratulations. She texts me back. We wish her well. I bet her and Matt are having a time down there on the Riverwalk in San Antonio. And I hope she's having a great time. And congratulations for winning that award. The first women's basketball coach to win such the award in Pat's name. Well, thank you, Debbie, for doing that research. And I would say that's a pretty decent excuse. We can let her off the hook for for missing ladies night tonight. And it gives us a chance to welcome Lexi Brown, who's a new member of the studio crew. Welcome, Lexi. Good player at Duke. Duke Blue Devils currently atop the ACC standings. Florida State just behind. Tied for second coming into tonight, along with Louisville. As you mentioned, these two teams were four and one coming into their games tonight. It's Collins had that three, some good energy and, and intensity. There are some good things, I think, to pick up from the way that NC State is playing this fourth quarter, despite the big deficit on the scoreboard. Well, look, they've cut it to 16, and that's a good trap by Westmore, forcing a timeout by Florida State. And with that, we'll take a quick break as well. Be right back to Florida State. Ball just back in play in Tallahassee. Florida State calling a timeout after NC State on an 8-0 run. And the lead 16 now. Six on the shot clock for Latson in Florida State. It's just her second miss of the night. Foul on There is enough time for NC State, but they are going to have to really execute and defend. And the way Florida State has been moving the ball and attacking, they need to keep doing the same thing. I don't think they want to slow it down or take time. I think they want to stay aggressive. Timpson. Easy two in the paint for Michaela KK Timpson. Eight points in the second half, 12 in the game. Another three launched by the Wolf Pack. Gordon drives to the basket and then hustles to get her own offensive rebound. All five foot four of her. That's great effort. That's just wanting the ball more than your defender. Three to shoot, gotta get a shot off. And she does. Seminole is a little confused getting back defensively. Can the Wolfpack make them pay? Not that time. And talk about ball handlers and guards. Well, there goes Latson. Slicing through until she ran into Rivers. And I think at the end of that play, they called a charge on Latson. This is the effort and the hustle right here by Gordon on the glass. Gets the, keeps the possession alive and allows her to get one off the glass to take it back to 20. So Rivers, it was a block on the other end, not a foul. And then she comes down, gets two points for NC State on the offensive end. Foul there against Madison Hayes of NC State. NC State foul 21, Hayes or Rivers, teams fourth. NC State four for five from the free throw line, while Florida State has made 11 out of 13. Platson got to the baseline, Gordon. Um. 
NC State extending their defense, looking to trap. Right here is another trap. Clatson, so tough to stop. There is a foul on that play, so she'll go to the free throw line. You really got to jump on that right hand. She's capable of going left, but you need to make her go that way if you can. Twenty-six points in the game for the ACC's leading scorer, above her season average of twenty-four point seven. And that is the first free throw miss in the last 39 attempts. Tania Latson had made 38 free throws in a row before that miss. What a great competitor she is. She is really going to be fun to watch develop, Latson. So is Naya River, River, NC State. Yeah. And if you are joining us late and wondering where the Wolfpack starters are, well, they're on the bench. It's been a night where Wes Moore has really leaned on his bench to try to bring the effort, intensity, and play that he wants to see on the floor. Phenomenal freshman, Latson, a point away from 30. Huge block by Timpson. Does it better than anybody in the ACC, but Jenny has it blocked on this end by Rivers. Latson with a terrific play on one end and Timpson on the other. Great D by Florida State protecting the rim. Timpson averages almost two and a half blocks a game. And Timpson, a member of the ACC All-Freshman team last year, Debbie, she only started one game for Florida State. My, how she has grown this year. And this new look Seminoles team, she's one of the familiar faces. But in a new way. And speaking of new faces, Latson just continues to put on a show. Her sixth 30-point game of the season. I mean, I love watching her. Hashtag ticket selling player. When Florida State's coming to your town, good luck coaches in the league game planning to keep her from getting in the paint. She is tough. Now, Timpson was really the only player still in there for Florida State, still managed to get an offensive rebound and eventually just stayed with the play. But Latson, I mean, come on, Debbie. We haven't gotten a, one of your signature lines yet. I know that she's driving a lot, but I don't want to say it. It's your line. 31 points. Shoot. Keep shooting. Yeah, well, you, give it to me? you gotta make a bunch come of threes. On, Shoot till your arm falls oh. off. She's just driving and scooping. <laughs> oh, come on. That doesn't count for the Debbie <laughs> shoot till your arm falls off. Drive till your lips. I don't know. She maybe really doesn't have good. the same feel. <laughs> she is really good and just a young freshman. And humble, smart, competitive, and loves the game. She definitely has a little chip on her shoulder to prove that she's capable and she wants to help her team more than anything than it is about individual. I really enjoy talking to her. Well, I look forward to hearing that in your Nothing But Net podcast when that interview comes out. We got some good players on there, Debbie, here lately. Oh yeah, Jen, I'm trying to hit all the top talent in the country. Just telling him to keep on scoring. Players like Caitlin Clark, she was on there, right? Oh, yeah, I've had Diamond Miller. I've had Caitlin Clark. I've had a lot of great players. The list goes on and on. Maddie Segrist, who's the nation's leading scorer at Villanova. And one opportunity here. Well, here's River Baldwin back on the floor, she knows. 
that I have enjoyed covering this year and talking about all season is how much parity there is in the game and how tough the ACC is. So we did a little research. I said the other day that eight of the 15 teams in the ACC have a win over a top 10 program. Well, look at the rest of the leagues. <laughs> and when you look at the SEC, that's Kentucky. And when you look at the Big 12, that's K-State with a win over a top 10 team. One. One team from each of those leagues. I mean, that's why it's so incredible. And I give both you and our crew at Florida State a lot of credit. You for just noticing there were quite a few in the ACC this year. And then to comparatively look at the other Power Five schools, it's, it's impressive. And that does speak to any number of teams in the ACC that can beat you. There will not be an easy night in this league as representative by the way Florida State has played and, and Duke, who is on top of the standings right now, is the only undefeated team remaining. It's been a fun year so far. I hope the fans are enjoying it as much as we are. Well, one minute not even left to play in this one. Florida State a point away from 90. About to knock off 11th ranked NC State. More women's hoops coming your way on ACCN tonight. Miami and Georgia Tech, the second of our doubleheader tonight. Miami's been playing really well too. And how about Ayla Cavender? She might get to shoot till your arm falls off. She's a tremendous three-point shooter is Haley Cavender. And she's shooting 44% from the three-point line. She's been fantastic. And I think Destiny Harden might be available tonight. Let's see if she gets a little bit of a run. Miami had a heck of a week last week, knocking off a couple of big time te teams in North Carolina and Virginia Tech. And doing it without right. Destiny Harden, to your point. Three in a row for Miami. Florida State is about to get back in the winning track after that overtime loss on the road at Boston College, their first ACC loss of the season. I'd say they bounce back. <laughs> points for the third highest scoring team in the nation. <laughs> 91 for Florida State and for NC State it's going to be a long hard look at how to fix whatever didn't go right tonight. They'll continue on the road go to North Carolina for the next game. Florida State will be welcoming in Louisville on Sunday but a good win tonight for Brooke Wyckoff's team balanced your star player with a big number 31 points for Latson. Bajetti follows up her 26 point night in the last game with 21 tonight Florida State makes seven triples and they go 14 from 17 for the line and they take care of the basketball with only with well they take care of the basketball and do a good job tonight better than their average Latson once again leading the way, 31 points. She breaks the single season Florida State record for 30 point games in a season. A lot of smiles in that Florida State huddle, as there should be, as the Seminoles improved to five and one in the ACC, 16 and three overall. What a performance tonight by Tania Latson and the Florida State Seminoles for Debbie Antonelli. I'm Jen Hildreth. We'll say goodbye, but much more to come tonight on ACCN. We'll now send it to the studio.